55 Sports. This is the locker room. that we say good evening to you all welcome inside another edition of the locker room that man is elijah collins my name is justin prince thanks so much for making us a part of your friday night and elijah this is one of my favorite weeks of the <laughs> yeah, high school sure. football <laughs> se season week seven is here and that means it's rivalry week in the sac that's right you got that right justin throughout the records throughout the rankings because none of that matters tonight it's rivalry week and the teams all across the summit seat are fighting for bragging rights We've, of course, got, yeah. of course, the totem pole game, the Battle of the Spooler Stadium, the Battle of Bishops, but all of those pale in, pale in comparison to the showdown between Homestead and Carroll. Yeah, you certainly got that right. And the reason for that is tonight, well, hey, there's more than just pride on the line. 6A, number 6, Carroll, on the road, visiting their biggest rival, Homestead, down at Walter Stadium. Let's get you out southwest. Chargers come into this game unbeaten on the season. Sparty, 3-3, three and three, losers of three straight. Carroll took both of these meetings between these two last season, including a seven-point dub in the regular season. Chargers had a 28-10 lead at half, got the ball to start the second. Homestead, though, trying to get something going on defense there. That's big number 92, Alondo Sheets taking big down man. Jimmy Sullivan for the sack. Forces third down, but Sullivan in this Carroll offense, too good. Sullivan finds Camden Hershberger to move the chains later in the drive. Hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Hershberger, another big catch on the slant for another Charger first down. And then just a few plays after that, Nathan Starks finishes it off. Gets in from 11 yards out, 99 yards. That score on the day for Starks. Carroll takes a 35-10 lead. Homestead, they, they would try and answer. Peyton Slavin going to find Brett Fox rolling out along the sideline here for a first down conversion. But Carroll would get that ball back, and there was just no slowing them down tonight. Hershberger, another big grab right here, finishes the run with some emphasis, too. 129 yards receiving on the night. They kept that drive with a 26-yard field goal here from Sebastian Lopez. Carroll goes on to cruise tonight, 52 to wow. 10. Chargers now 7 and 0, and they can clinch the SAC title next week. All right, next matchup comes at Spooler Stadium. Snyder riding on the heels of Carroll, second in the SAC tonight. They host Quentin Bowen and the Northrop Bruins. First quarter we go. Luke Hopper throws a quick dime to Jordan Lee. Sees some open field on the right side, takes it upfield for a nice little gain. He's finally brought down around the 20 yard line. From there, well, we know. It's easy work. Hopper it hands it off to Uriah Bucking. Excuse me. Buchanan. Buchanan. There it is. Slices and dices through traffic. It's at six on the board for the first score of the game. Field goal would be good. Panthers take a 7-0 lead in. On the defensive end, they would look just as good. Bruins try to run it up the middle. Nothing gained there. Bruins go four and out. And that's going to lead to another Panther touchdown. Hopper drops it in the basket to Kamari Juarez. And the Panthers get the job done tonight. They take the win 48 to zip. All right, our next stop in the SAC rivalry route comes over at Chambers Field. It's the totem pole game between north side and south side. Take it to the first quarter. No score yet. South side with the ball, but hey, not for long. Bad snap. It's recovered by Devon Doty. North side, they're going to take over with a short field, but hey, Turnabout is fair play. First play of the next series for the Legends. Handoff here goes to John Tay Lambert. Looks like he's got a seam, but uh, he Ooh. coughs up the ball instead. Jermaine Freeman jumps on it. Archers take over. 
but they couldn't do anything with that drive. Legends would get the ball right back, and they'd go right back down the field. Tate Johnson going to cap off that drive with a short touchdown run. Legends go up seven. They cruise to the 43-8 victory this evening. It's their fifth straight totem pole victory. All right, to Zollinger Stadium we go. Wayne and Concordia take center stage. Both teams enter at two and four. Jump into the third quarter we go. Wayne up 14-6. Concordia is going to try and answer. Landon Kaczynski finds some open green up the middle before finally being brought down. First down's good, and we're going to try and do it again. Kaczynski up the gut. Good defensive effort from Wayne, but the Cadets somehow pick up the first down after the play. And a few plays later, that's going to lead to this. Eli Maddox looks to be in trouble, but finds a man under pressure. Maddox right. As you say, Maddox to Maddox. Yeah, yeah there we go. That's, that's a good combo there. They take the big-time comeback win. They win 29-22. to 22. All right, our last rivalry stop comes down at Lewis Field. Battle of the Bishops, baby. 2A number 10 Lures hosting 5A number 10 Dwenger. Pick things up, second quarter. Saints with a 10 0 lead, but not for long. Charlie Stansky drops back, finds Braden McInturf in the back of the end zone for six. The Knights cut the Saints' lead down to three. Ensuing touch for Dwenger and well, hey, things just go from bad to worse here. Braxton Burmis gets drugged down in his end zone by RJ Hogue. Clap them together. That's a safety for Lures. Put two more points on the board. It's a one-point ball game later in the quarter. Saints back on O. Burmez rolling left. Looks downfield, but he's going to be picked here by Jackson McCullough. Lures takes over with some time before half, but the Saints defense would hold C.J. Davis. Going to come up with an interception of his own on Stansky right here Ugh. just before the break. Wenger takes a 10-9 lead to the locker room, and they hold off Lures from there. Saints win this one, 17-12. All right, here we go. Undefeated Adam Central hosting winless Southern Wells. First drive, just a few plays into the game. Keegan Bloom punches it in from two yards out. He's pretty good. Jets go up early after three and out on the ensuing drive. The Raiders out to punt, but fortunately the snap is going to sail over Jared Martins. Here oh. it is. That's rough there. Heads yeah. out in the end zone for the safety. Makes it an 8-0 Jets. And then after a free kick, Bloom added again with a big run to go inside the 10. Then the very next play, sharing some love this time and keeping it on the ground. Gavin Cook walks it in untouched for the TD. The Jets pour it on a skunk. The Raiders 63 to 7. Sticking the ACAC now. Heritage on the road visiting Bluffton second quarter. Down 14-0. Charlie Riddle chases down, throws down Braxton Betancourt for a huge sack. After the punt, Kobe Meyer and the Heritage offense take over. And Meyer, hey, going to keep it himself. Right up the gut, makes a couple guys miss for the touchdown. Extra boy miss, so it's 14-6. Answering right back, though, was Big Daddy Kungs and Company. Bencourt Ooh, that's a good catch. launches one downfield, finds A.J. Strebler through contact, pulls it down into the end zone, hits those points back, but the Patriots make the second half come back tonight. Shout out to Coach Coltman and company. They walk away with a 31-20 victory. Our final stop in the ACAC comes down in Portland, 1A number 9 South Adams visiting Jay County. Patriots got on the board first. Sean Bailey connects with Bryce Wink who drags a couple dudes into the end zone. Jay County up seven at that point. Starts quick to answer. It's going to be Owen Wainer finds Nathan Mossman over the middle for the touchdown. That's a good snag there, and it's all the star fires from there. They cruise tonight 49-27, the final. Elsewhere in the ACAC, Woodland steps out of conference play, and they take down Culver Academies this evening, 16-14 over in Woodburn. And more scores around the area. Warsaw picks up the big 36 to zip win. They move to 5-2 and two on the season. All right, it's time for our first break of the night, but don't touch that remote. Big time conference championship implications in the NEA, NECC, TRC, all on the line this evening. We got highlights from those and more coming up next in the locker room. We're the north side marching legends, and the locker room marches on after this. This is the locker room. Hey, welcome back inside the locker room, everyone. Well, Elijah, as the weather gets cooler, conference races, they start to heat up. Of course, we saw Carroll take firm control yeah. of the SAC earlier, but the NEA, 
NECC both still remain up for grabs. Yeah, in the NE8, despite Norwell's dominance this season, the Knights are still in the race for first place with Columbia City right there at the top of the standings with them. Both came in tonight unbeaten in conference play, but with that stay the same by the end tonight. Yeah, like how many licks it takes to get to the Tootsie Roll Center of a Tootsie Pop? Let's find out. Three, number four, Norwell back home at the courtyard hosting DeKalb. DeKalb doing his best to keep it tight early, taking 7-7 seven, seven time in the second quarter, and then in the second, uh, Norwell started to pull away. That was the DeKalb secondary halting five shots to the end zone to end the half, but then they held Norwell to a field goal. Knights go into the breakup 27-14, but then, uh, yeah, it was it was all Norwell after that. Aiden Rusu named homecoming king at halftime, and then he starts the second half. You got to show out if you're home and coming king, right? Your majesty. <laughs> Takes it all the way in for a kickoff return for a touchdown, about 80 yards score. And, uh, and, and yeah, Norwell just kept on cruising after that. Norwell comes away with a big winner this evening. They are now 7-0 and on the season. Knights trounce the Cal, 62 to 14 your final. All right, for our next stop, we head over to East Noble as the Knights take on the Columbia City. Eagles, we're going to go ahead and start off in the second quarter. See City up 21 to 7 when Colton Piper hits the wide receiver straight and Fuller for the score. Eagles go up 28 to 7. The very next drive, Fuller is at it again. He's doing it on both sides of the field. He picks off Xander. Wow. Brazel. Columbia City gets it in nice territory. Later on and just before halftime, Piper airs it out. Here it is. This time, the tight end. Peyton Shearer to make it 35 to 7. Eagles run away with it. They go on to take this one 42 to 19. All right, next stop in the NE8 comes over at Leo Stadium. Leo hosting Huntington North tonight. Pick it up second quarter. Lions up 13-6, but a big time defensive play by Sam Close in the backfield there. Lions lose some yardage after that one, but it wouldn't matter too much. Kyler Decker dropping back. Slings it up over the middle, falls in the hands of Brock Schott. Decker, 167 yards passing tonight. And then just under four minutes to go in the second quarter. Lions going to add on another one. This time they give it to Max Leffler. Already saw what he can do with it. Finds a date with the end zone. 114 yards, three scores for Leffler. Lions run away with this one. 41-6 the final. Elsewhere in the NEA, New Haven shuts out Belmont tonight, 28-0, your final in that one this evening. Now we head over to East Side as the Blazers duke it out with the Fremont Eagles. Early in the first quarter, it's going to be Cuban Carson Jacobs. Here he is, going to take matters into his own hands and breaks off for the smooth little run there. Later on, drives Jacobs, does it again after the play. He was pretty good tonight. He's pretty good. Doing yes. it all. East Side misses the extra point after he scores once again. And the Eagles go up 6 0. Going to the next drive, it's going to be Fremont. On this time they're going to answer it's going to be QB Zach Pika airs it out and this one it gets tipped a bunch of times and it's picked off by Briar Muncy what a play <laughs> that drill. was and later on in the first the Blazers still up 6-0 when Jacobs hits Xavier Davis we're going to see the very next play Xavier Davis and he'll take it to the house Eastside goes up 12-0 they go for two that tell me if you heard this before Jacobs runs it in and Converts to go up 14 nil. Eastside goes on to take it, take this one 62 to 8. And some more scores around the area. Busco comes up with a big win tonight, 42 to zip. They move to 5 and 2 on the season. All right, let's move up to the South Bend area. Angola taking a trip outside of conference play, taking on Mishawaka Marion. Second quarter, Angola already up seven, looking for more before half. Tyler Call rolls out, hits Lane King over the middle for a nice gain. That moves the chains. Final minute of the half, Hornets with a trick play here. Call throws a screen pass to Andre Tagliaferri. Looking deep for King, but it's a little underthrown. Marion breaks it up. Angola leads seven nothing in half. They dominate the second half. Hornets cruise tonight, 28 nothing. Your final this evening. Some more scores for you around the area. West West Noble with a low scoring game tonight, but they still get the win 7 6 over Lakeland. Then Gary picks up the 28 6 win over Fairfield. Elsewhere in the NECC tonight, Bremen all over Prairie Heights 38 6, your final in that one. All right, next on the board, Tippecanoe Valley hosting McConaughey first quarter. 
Oconaqua is going to try and go for the punt, but a good block for TP Valley there. Alex Bailey's going to pick it up and walk it in for a nice little touchdown for the first score of the game. Later on in the first 14-0 game, under eight minutes to play. The Vikings are going to answer once again, thanks to that guy there. Nate Parker runs it in for the touchdown. We're going to hear some more of him again. Second quarter, a big lead for the Vikings, 36-7. And Parker does it again, and TP Valley takes the big-time win, 57-14, to your final. Elsewhere in the TRC, we head over to Wabash. Packed house on hand for Southwood. They're hosting Peru. Southwood 4-2 on the season. And they were looking pretty good early, but Peru trying to, you know, do something in the visiting house. That was uh, Braxton Strong with a first down and then some a little bit later. How about uh, some more for Peru? That's Braxton Robbins. Touchdown. Peru takes a 6-0 lead. Extra point, no good. Knight's turn now. This on fourth down, Morgan Lloyd. That's Mo Lloyd for you folks in Wabash Ooh, County. Just uh, bruising <laughs> Goodness. people left and right. Keeps fighting for it. Tackled out of bounds, but uh, a, a penalty after that. Sets the play back a little bit. Cole Weiner says, hey, no, no big deal. Throws the lob here to... Luke Pershing, they go on to score a little bit later in the drive. Weiner finishing with two passing TDs, no, excuse me, two rushing TDs, six passing TDs. Southwood cruises tonight, 55-25, the final. All right, up the road now to Northfield, the Norsemen hosting the Rochester Zebras. Pick it up in the second quarter, Mason Fisher, here he is. The keeper goes left, gets the first down, and then some good carry there. And then just a few plays later, Norseman back at it a couple yards out. C.J. Long fights his way in there, puts his team up 13-7. Extra point was no good, unfortunately, but a hey, Zebra is looking to respond now. It's going to be Alex Deming getting the handoff, but he stopped almost immediately by Jordan Kinsey. Then they keep fighting, though. A little later, Aaron Swango drops back, heaves it up, finds Colton Roberta for the first down, and they keep going. Deming gets the handoff once again, basically walks it in the end zone, ties it up. Northfield blocked the extra point attempt, but Rochester comes out on top 42-33, to the final. And some more scores for you. Wabash picks up the win 33 to 32 over North Miami. And then Manchester gets the win 34 to 12 over Whitco. And it's time for our play of the night. We're going to head back down to the courtyard. Aiden Rusu, royalty Taking down there to the tonight. House. Named homecoming king at halftime. Show me a man that had a better night I than I was going to say, you're the homecoming king. You got to show out. You, you get and named homecoming king, and then first play of the second half, right after that happens. Take you, it to you, the you, house. You house a kickoff. <laughs> How about that? Roll out the red car before. Aiden Rusu. Not even touched. Hey, and nice look at that. Nice little arm. stiff arm. There you go. 80 yards, basically untouched. Norwell rolls. They're 7-0. What, no uh, what a fun night of football.